Okay, consider this problem, and the question I have, is this a steady or an unsteady uh, uh, problem? Give it some thought. Uh, this is a steady uh, problem uh, because uh, it could continue to run uh, forever. Uh, so anyway, uh, how would you approach this? What kind of um, uh, equations are you going to write? Give it some thought. Okay, since they're looking for mass uh, flow rate, uh, the first thing I did was uh, beginning with the end in mind, which I've talked about before, uh, I started with an equation that will calculate the mass flow rate. Uh, so I'm using that uh, the, the equation that I hope is, is uh, uh, normal for you by now. It's density times area times velocity. Density is one over little v, so uh, it's area times velocity over little v. What I'm hoping is that I can look this uh, uh, thing that's circled in blue because I'm given the inlet conditions. So I'm hoping I can look that up or somehow calculate it. All right. So uh, in this case, I've got the mass flow rate. Uh, if I can get the V in, I've got everything I need. Uh, how in the world are we going to find V in? Give some thought. Okay, uh, the air uh, here is uh, an ideal gas, so I'm going to use the ideal gas equation. So the ideal gas equation is pressure times little v, the little volume in, equals the uh, uh, gas constant for air times the temperature inlet. This has to be in uh, Kelvin. It uh, has to be absolute temperature. Uh, so then I can solve that equation for the vn. Uh, so I just it's just R times temperature over pressure. I have the temperatures and the pressures. So if I can find the R, I can do it. Now, what table do you use to get R? See if you can find it. Okay, I'm using table A2. The gas is air. The gas constant is 0 0.2870. Watch the units on this. Make sure that you get the right number. Okay, give it some thought. Okay, so if you notice it's table A2, the R for air is 287. Why? Because it was in kilojoules, and you, if I'm going to use standard units, I want it in joules. So it's uh, multiplied by 1,000. Okay, so then I just plug numbers in here, and I get the uh, little v in, uh, which was the, uh, uh, I think that's what I wanted. Yeah, well, basically, you're going to take the Vn, you're going to put it in this equation, and you get the mass flow rate. That's what he wants. So uh, go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you the correct answer. Okay, so you see I just took the point to the, the thing that's in black is down here, and then the, the little V I put in here, and you calculate 46.87. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, how are you going to get the power? Okay, for the power, I'm using the energy equation. Uh, so for this uh, um, uh, turbine, uh, it's adiabatic. That means that there's no heat uh, energy. Uh, so you have energy that's going in. So you have a rate uh, because it's a continuous system. It's going to run forever. I'm doing it as a rate rather than the total mass. So it's the mass rate that, that goes in. Uh, and then this is the energy that goes in. This is H because there's internal and there's flow work. So it's the H that goes in. Uh, plus, uh, on, you know, it's a pain in the neck, but I've got a kinetic energy. They tell me the velocity is 40. Um, and I'm using standard units on that. Uh, this is the energy that comes out. So the mass, that, the rate that mass comes out, and then there's uh, U and flow, and then there's kinetic as well. And then this is the power that's going to come out of the uh, out of the uh, turbine, uh, and that's equal to zero because it doesn't uh, you know change inside the the system. Okay, the things that are circled in green, I'm hoping to be able to look up. The things that are in blue, I don't know. So there's two unknowns here. What are you going to do? You need another equation. Give it a thought. Okay, because one of my unknowns is this velocity. I'm trying to write a velocity in terms of the things that I know, which is the mass. So the velocity at the exit times the area of the exit is equal to the mass flow rate uh, times the specific volume. So again, in green, I'm hoping I can look these things up. If I can look up all of the green terms, then I only have uh, uh, two blue unknowns, and I've got two equations to do it. So uh, let's uh, think about looking it up. Give some thought to how you're going to find these values. 
Okay, again, because it's an ideal gas, I'm going to use the ideal gas equation. So the pressure at the exit times the little volume at the exit equals the gas constant times the temperature. Again, make sure your temperature's in absolute. Uh, so you can, you can use the black equation and solve for the uh, little v. You take the little v, put it into the blue equation, and you can solve for the velocity that's at the end. So you've got the velocity coming out. Okay, so now what's left is to solve for the power, right? So you've, you've used this equation, this blue one, so now you want to use this one. So see if you can get the correct answer there. And again, you're going to have to find the H and the two H's. Okay, what I did, uh, since it's an ideal gas, there's a formula for the enthalpy of an ideal gas. It's equal to Cp. This is the... the uh, uh, heat capacity, the pressure constant heat capacity times the temperature. Again, this is going to be in absolute uh, values. Uh, and the, you're going to look up the CP in a table. Uh, the table is going to be A2. And I'm going to use the, uh, the part of A2 that has the C values as a function of temperature. So I'm going to pause that and bring that table up. Okay, here's the first page of table A2. If you notice, these values are all at uh, 300 Kelvin, but if you scroll to the next uh, continuation of the table, uh, you will find that, the, that this one lists the values of the properties at various temperatures. So we're at um, air, and um, the uh, inlet temperature is uh, 400 uh, centigrade. Hang on. Yeah, that didn't sound right. The, uh, the temperature is um, 500 centigrade going in. So the table is, oh, can't find it. Okay, so here's the table. The inlet temperature is 500 centigrade, so it's right there. The CP is the first one in the, in the case, or in the, in the thing, so it's 1.029. Notice that it's kilojoules. So you got to multiply this thing by a thousand. Oops, uh, the temperature is in Kelvin. 500 centigrade is 773 uh, Kelvin, right? You have to add 273. Uh, so uh, it's going to be between the 750 and the 800. So I'm going to interpolate between these two values to get the C that I want. So I'm going to pull up that spreadsheet that shows you how the, that allows you to uh, interpolate. Okay, so this is the Thermo X, uh, XLS. This is the, um, the spreadsheet for uh, the, the for interpolation. So uh, the temperature is what I I know. So uh, from the table, uh, I have a temperature of 750, uh, and the uh, heat capacity at 750 is 1.087. Uh, the uh, second temperature that's too high is 800. Um, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, 800, this is Kelvin. And then uh, the value from the table at 800 is 1.099. And uh, the temperature I'm actually looking for is 500 plus 273. So that's 773. And uh, hit enter, and that's the value that it is. But these are kilojoules, so you want to put that in as... Uh, you multiply by a thousand. So it's 1092.5. Okay, so I'm back. Here's the 1092.5. I think that's what I said it was. Um, 10925, yes. 10925, 10925, right? Uh, for the second one, the, the, uh, the CP going out, uh, let me pull up the table again. Okay, the exit temperature is 127, so if you add uh, 273 to get absolute, you get 400. So uh, thank goodness this is in the table. So the number is 1.013, again multiplied by 1,000, so it's 1013. Okay, so we're back to the uh, problem. This is 1013, I got that out of the table. Okay, so now uh, with the CP, you can come over and get the H. Uh, for the inlet and you can get the H for the exit. So the only thing that's left then is to take this energy equation right here, 
plug in all the numbers that you know and calculate the, uh, the power that comes out. So do that and then I'll show you the uh, solution. Okay, so here is the, uh, in red, is the, uh, the, the energy equation from up here. All I did was I took the, uh, uh, the, the two uh, mass times H's and I just put them to the other side. So here's your H in, um, and uh, well, actually you take the power and put it over. Uh, so this is the H in, and then this is the H exit. I just grouped them together. And for the H's, you're gonna put in C, P times the temperature. So your two H's are uh, right here. So it's uh, the, C, the CP times the temperature in, in, in absolute, and then CP times the temperature out in absolute. So those are your H's. You put those numbers in, you've got the velocities, um, and then you just calculate the power. So see if you can get the correct power, and then uh, I'll show you the answer. Okay, so the power uh, comes out to 1.8 times 10 to the 7. Uh, the unit on this is standard unit, so this is going to be watts. Uh, now the, the solution is given in megawatts, and so I convert from watts to kilowatts, so that becomes uh, to the 4, and then you divide by another 1,000, and that will convert uh, from uh, kilowatts into, uh, excuse me, uh, this is equal to this one. That's kilowatts, and then divide by 1,000 again, and that'll get you megawatts. So that's the correct answer.